The traveling salesperson problem is not only another NP hard problem we are looking at, but moreover, it adds a new quality to our problems, and this is optimality. That is now we are not satisfied by simply obtaining feasible solutions. Now we want the best among all feasible solutions. So we want optimal models. Okay, let's look at its definition. In a pretty austere way, we may formulate the traveling salesperson problem as compute the shortest cycle in a weighted graph such that each node it is visited exactly once. Okay, that's pretty austere. So, traveling salespersons normally travel around uh, cities and the idea is that the graph, our weighted graph, represents a network of cities where each edge or each arc represents uh, a road between the city and the weight on this arc represents the distance among the cities. And then the problem consists of the question, what is the shortest possible route that, visit, that visits each city exactly once and returns at the end to the origin? So we have a cycle. So this is not only a practically very relevant problem, it actually extends an already well-known problem, which is called the Hamiltonian cycle problem. This is the underlying decision problem that has no optimization involved and it's simply about deciding is there a cycle in the graph that visits each node exactly once. And that this problem is pretty relevant can actually be seen by looking at applications like logistics, planning, chip design, and it's the core of vehicle routing. So routing is more or less one of the key features of this, of this problem. So let's look at the encoding. But before looking at the actual encoding, let's look at an exemplary uh, problem instance. So we have here a weighted graph that consists of four nodes, which we call cities, A, B, C, and D. And we have uh, weighted edges among them. So there is an edge from A to B, and the weight on this edge is 10. So there is a road from A to B, and this road uh, is 10 kilometers long. I think that's pretty obvious. And we mark also the, start, the starting city, the starting and the returning city. So in this case, we start at city A. Okay, so this is the problem instance. Our encoding is not only nicely uniform in separating problem instances like the one we've seen before from the actual problem encoding that we're looking at right now, but it also ni nicely reflects the generate and test methodology of ASP. So here the first rule is the generator and all remaining rules constitute the tester that analyze the solution candidate obtained here and check whether it, could, whether it um, represents a valid solution to our problem. Let's first look at the generator. So in a way, this is again a very simplistic generator where we, for, where we can decide for each road X and Y whether we travel on this road or not. So more or less our solution is, is represented by instances of this uh, travel predicate here or instances of this atom here. And for each road, we just decide, do we take it into our solution or not? By using here an underscore, we just uh, signal that we're not interested in, in the value of this variable. Now, actually, there are quite some bizarre uh, solution candidates, right? One extreme is where we do not select any road for traveling. This means we will have an empty cycle, an empty path, right? And well, that won't really work. And on the other hand, the other extreme is that we select all the roads to travel upon. And well, depending on the graph, um, that may work, but usually it won't, right? So the other th phenomenon is, of course, that what we do is we select a, ro a road here, a road there, a road here. But the question is, are these guys connected? Do they constitute a path? Right? This is actually one of the salient problems that we have to investigate. To this end, the two first rules of our tester allow us to analyze our solution candidate and derive all nodes that can be visited from the starting node by following the travels suggested by the solution candidate. Now, let's look at this a bit in, in more detail. We have here two rules. One is more or less the base case. The other is the recursive case. So we have defined the starting node 
And if, if our solution candidate suggests to travel from the starting node to another node Y, we can derive that Y uh, has been visited. And now recursively, if we have derived that X uh, can be visited and our solution candidate suggests to travel from X to Y, then Y can also be visited in our solution candidate. Okay, so in this way we get all the nodes that can be visited from the starting node by following the travel suggested by our uh, solution candidate. Now, the killing idea is actually now to add this integrity concern that says it must not be the case that there is a city that is not visited. And notably, this includes the starting node because uh, here you, you can derive that a node has been visited by starting from the node, but to derive that the starting node is also visited, you have to close a cycle. So you really have to have a cycle. So this is more or less what these first three rules make sure. They make sure that all of the nodes that were guessed in a solution candidate are reachable and also that the path takes you back to the uh, starting node that is at the path is a cycle that includes the starting node. Okay, now how can we make sure that no node was visited twice? And this is done with the last two rules. The idea is simply to eliminate solution candidates uh, in which you leave a city twice and with the, in the second case to forbid situations where you arrive at a city twice. Right? So there must be no city X so that there's a travel from X to one instantiation of Y and another instantiation of Y because this, would, this satisfies then this constraint that says there are uh, two or more such, uh, such atoms that start from X. And in the same way, uh, the second constraint where you arrive at X. Uh, in fact, the second is strictly speaking not needed, but actually it improves performance quite a lot. But I zip this on performance. So last but not least, what we compute here is a Hamiltonian circuit. Now we want to make sure that our solution guess also gives us an optimum solution. Optimization simply identifies among all solutions the best solutions. And what is best here is simply the shortest route. So you may remember that we have two alternative ways to describe this in ASP. One are weak constraints and the other ones are minimized statements. Let's just look at both alternatives one after the other. Now, weak constraints are from the flavor a little bit like integrity constraints, just that integrity constraints, once they are satisfied, eliminate a solution candidate, while weak constraints impose a penalty. So in our case, whenever we uh, decide to travel from x to y by deriving the predicate travel x, y, we generate the penalty given by the distance between x and y. This is indicated here. Now, in this way, uh, whenever you travel, you induce a penalty, and whenever there are weak constraints in the code, they instruct the solver to look for the smallest, for the solution with the smallest sum of penalties. This is actually how you can compute in this way the, a solution to the traveling salesperson problem. Alternatively, you can use a minimized statement. And the minimized statement are more or less a more have, have more or less a more global statement, right? While I would say that weak constraints more look look a little bit more at, at, at specific conditions. Where here the idea is you minimize the sum of all uh, distances whenever you travel from x to y and the distance between x and y is d. So both give you identical uh, solutions. It's more or less a matter of taste whether you prefer minimized statements or weak constraints and I think it also depends a little bit on the problem. Now let's actually see how we obtain a solution by giving our original problem instance together with either of the two um, uh, encodings to Klingo. Before applying Klingo in our scenario, let me just mention that Klingo has several alternative ways to compute an optimum solution. And I only illustrate you now the default behavior, which actually amounts to branch and bound optimization. So anyway, you see the familiar uh, prompt, then there's Klingo, our problem 
uh, encoding our problem instance. You push the button, or let's say I push it. Uh, uh, it reads the file, solves it, and at some point, at some point, the first uh, solution pops up. So th th in this solution, we travel from A to B, from B to D, from D to C, from C to A, and we have induced a, um, a penalty or the sum of, of the weights on the on the arc or the sum of the distances is hundred. Okay, now we found one solution and it has value hundred. Now what branch and bound now does is to say okay. I now also add a constraint that says that the next solution must be better than 100 and then the whole system is launched again. So this is now happens automatically within, within uh, Klingo and a second answer is obtained and here we travel well, from A to B, from B to C now because here we travel to D, then to D and then back to A and here we had get a better value so our route is only 95 kilometers long and this is better. Now what happens again uh, Klingo uh, looks for an, a stable model that is better than 95 it doesn't uh, find one hence it knows that the last one was an optimum one so the one that is now in green is an optimum one. There may actually be other solutions that have the same value of 90, 95 here it only finds one optimum solution in that way it also has options to enumerate all optimum ones, but uh, I don't want to discuss this now. Anyway, and then it terminates, it says an optimum is found, two models were generated by looking for it, well, you've seen this, the, the yellow one and the green one here, and the, op the optimum found is 95, and in this way we actually know that all optimum solutions must have uh, a value of 95, and there may be others, but we don't know. Again, we can look for them. Good, so this is actually how optimization works. Last but not least, let us look perhaps at a slightly more compact encoding. And this again more or less melts together a program part. So in this case we, we combine the generator with the constraint on visiting, uh, visiting nodes, so arriving at nodes and leaving nodes. And more or less this is the only thing that is here put together while the remaining part is, 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 is just the same, right? So here we analyze our solution candidate and make sure that, every, that all the nodes have been visited. Here we optimize and this combines our, the, our original uh, generator with the constraints that you, are, that you have to visit each node exactly once. Again, this is just a more compact uh, encoding um, this way of writing up will be unfolded by the solver at some point into a, a choice rule and constraints. So it's just a nicer way to write things up. It's not more efficient. And you can try it out yourself, right? So that was quite right. So, and this ends now the traveling salesperson problem. Next, we look at reviewer assignments. Stay tuned.